It's Brian Preston, the money guy. So here's the here's the third thing we figured out from a behavioral standpoint. Millionaires, they practice the financial order of operations. That's exactly right. If that's a concept you're brand new to, you've never heard of, we want you to go to our website, go to moneyguy.com slash resources, and we actually have a deliverable for you. It is completely free that walks through the nine steps of the financial order of operations. If you've not had a chance to check that out, go check it out because... One of the thing that million one of the things that millionaires have done is they have followed the tried and true process of exactly what to do with their next dollar in their army of dollar bills. And if you need proof on this, this is the first thing is like emergency reserves. Mm-hmm. And you can see, and, and I, we we joked about this that less it was one percent keep less than one month of cash reserves. Yep. The lion's share, once again, over ha- right at half, 46% keep four to six months. Mm-hmm. And then you can see 7% keep one to three. But if you did four to six, seven to nine, 10 to 18, or 18 plus, you can see we've pretty much got 92% right. of the financial mutants who are our clients are keeping definitely greater than four to six months of cash reserves. What that suggests to me is that they are not living paycheck to paycheck. They are not folks that are just trying to scrimp by. And so if you're, again, if you're someone out there and you're trying to figure out, man, I just want to know how should I do it? What should I be doing? Go out to the website, go to moneyguy.com backslash resources and make sure you download this free deliverable. It is out there. It is available to you to help you figure out exactly what you should be doing with your next dollar. So let's pivot now to, Bo, how did they do it? Love it. And and here's what, you know, we, you guys, if you've been watching Money Guy content, you know this, but mm-hmm. I think it's worth repeating. It's worth affirming. Did they inherit it? Because that's, that's what people are thinking. Uh, you know, I, when I was brought up, that was what I always thought. If you wanted to be wealthy, then mom and dad or grandma and grandpa had to be wealthy. It had to be something that was passed down. Wealth was something you were born into, not something that you created. It wasn't until I got out in the real world, I recognized that could not be farther from the truth. Well, you think about lifestyles of the rich and famous, mm-hmm. silver spoons with Ricky Schroeder. Yep. I mean, all these things kind of portrayed, or even, I mean, if you think about um, oh, Mr. Drummond, and then, and then I'm trying to think of, oh gosh, I'm blanking on the the, the two adopted brothers. Um, what you talk about, Willis? Oh, uh, different strokes. Different is that different is strokes? It different strokes. Anyway, guys, you will fill it in in the comments because this is this is the part. Uh, it will only be people my age that will know the Ricky Schroeder reference as well as um, what you're talking about, Willis. But it is one of those things where I, I think I was shocked to find out 72% received less than $10,000. If you push it up to between 10000 to 99000 that was 20% of our respondents. So if you group those two numbers together, 92% of the people of our survey received less than 100,000 with the vast majority of them, 72%, receiving less than 10,000. Yeah, so what I, w- I want to restate what that means. You know, we, we interviewed groups of millionaires, right? A group of folks who have reached a large level of wealth. 92% of them, while they might have inherited something, that was not the contributing factor that allowed them to attain that level of success, that allowed them to build wealth. It wasn't because they inherited it. They truly are that first generation millionaire. So a lot of you are now probably going, wow, okay, that that make that seems much more doable. Mm-hmm. But maybe maybe these guys are talking about the LeBrons out there. You know, <laughs> the people or the Justin Timberlakes, the people where God got distracted and while he was sprinkling the talents on on them, he got distracted and too much, too much fell, fell out, out of, <laughs> fell out of the container, you know, where you know, and, and that's why these are the virtuosos and other things. And that's just not the case. From our research, here's what we found is that 68% of the millionaires got there the boring, Mm -hmm. slow and steady way of just being savers and investors. That's exactly right. They took the path that everyone, and we literally mean everyone can take. There is nothing remarkable about someone who is a saver and investor other than the fact that they have the discipline to be a saver and investor. Now, rounding it out, I mean, there was 19% that were senior executives, 8% 8% that were entrepreneurs, and then virtuoso, that is the LeBrons, the Justin Timberlakes, where they have a talent that makes them head and shoulders 
It's just you throw money at them because they're really good at what they do. <laughs> that was only 5% of, of our client base. If you're curious about these terms, if these terms that you're not familiar with or you haven't heard previously, we actually did a show on this. You can go out to our website, moneyguy.com, or you can go into YouTube and search this or go out on iTunes. We did a show titled How Rich People Get Rich, The Secrets Revealed, where we actually walk through these four paths. Who is a virtuoso? What does that look like? Who is a saver and investor? What does that look like? If you're curious to where you fall or which path you might fall into, you should go check out this show because it's going to walk you through exactly how wealthy people build their wealth. It also gives you an opportunity to see that Justin Timberlake steals his style. He does. From yeah, me, from actually. Brian. It's, I JT mean, if you go watch the album cover, JBP. I'm like, come on, JT. Just because you're moving to our neck of the woods, <laughs> uh, it's okay. Yeah, I'll let it. I love it. I love it. <laughs>